in this video we'll discuss about autoimmune disorders of thyroid thyroid gland is a largest endocrine gland so thyroid gland is the largest endocrine gland in human body weight nearly 15 to 20 grams human neck we have two lobes right left okay so we have two lobes of thyroid gland uh, which are combined together with the isthmus isthmus so two lobes combined together with the isthmus right and left lobe combined with the isthmus that is normal anatomy, um, anatomy of thyroid and measure 5 into 3 into 2 cm the term thyroid hormone denotes both thyroxine and triiodothyronine thyroxine t4 and triiodo tyronine t3 now from this thyroid gland two hormones are synthesized so from this thyroid gland uh, two hormones are synthesized inside this gland first one is t3 second one is t4 both are thyroid hormones t3 and t4 are thyroid hormones T3 is known as triiodotyronine. This one having 4 iodine. That's why known as thyroxine. 4 iodine component is presented. So T3 and T4 are two type of hormones. The thyroid hormones which are synthesized inside the thyroid gland both both t3 and t4 derivatives of thyronine which is formed of tyrosine tyrosine is an amino acid thyroid gland how many cells are present two type of cell is present um, the this is then and this one is the anatomy now if you cut we make a slide two type of cells like this two type of cell is presented one is follicular cell lining the acinus second one is para follicular cell this one is follicular cell this one is the para follicular cells so this uh, normal thyroid we will cut we will make slide two type of cell follicular cell and para follicular cell it also called a c cell this circular circular there are forming follicle so this one is the follicle follicular cells the circle is follicle and the cell lining are known as follicular cell this one is the follicular cell separate cells this is the first type of cell inside lumen inside this part is the lumen inside lumen of that follicles it containing colloidal material second type of cell para follicular cell it have another name c cell so between follicular cell we have between follicular cell we have para follicular cell both secrete hormone follicle cells secrete t3 and t4 in blood follicle cell secrete t3 and t4 in blood para follicular cell secrete para thyroid hormones so we have thyroid hormone and para thyroid hormone in our blood Uh, this one is the follicular cell uh, this one part only this one is the follicular cell which is lining one of that follicular cell now it synthesis 
T3 and T4. So it having six steps. This one is the blood vessels. This one, this follicular cell. Then in here that lumen. This part only separate way. Here we are writing. So blood vessels, follicular cell inside lumen is present. From blood vessels, it will take iodide. Um, this iodide is presented in blood whatever iodide we take um, salt okay in our diet it is observed it will go into that blood from blood iodide is trapped by this cell so iodide is trapped by this cell so this one is the follicular cell one side we have blood another side we have lumen so this iodide okay this iodide is trapped on this side of that lumen side is trapped so iodide transporter is presented on the cells so iodide trapping so here trapping process will occur iodide trapping is done after going inside this iodide so it will reach to now lumen inside this iodide is converted into iodine iodide is converted into io um, iodine inorganic iodine presence of enzyme peroxidase enzyme so this oxidation takes place blood do not uh, blood having iodide only okay when the trapping process after that only it will convert it into iodine blood don't have iodine iodide form only presented then only it will convert it into iodine form now this iodide get converted into iodine next to third steps this iodine combined with the tyronine tyronine is the amino acid it will form two things one is mono iodide tyronine and di iodide tyronine mono iodo tyronine mit di iodo tyrosine okay tyrosine this one is di uh, dit mit and dit so this is how mit and dit are formed next step to di uh, it that means di iodo tyrosine combined together uh, it is known as t4 one di iodo tyrosine and one mono iodo uh, mono iodo tyrosine together to form t3 this is known known as how t3 and t4 are formed this is known as coupling reaction so third fourth step name is called as coupling reaction coupling reaction first step trapping iodide iodide is con uh, okay uh, first form iodide then iodide is oxi oxidized in the form of iodine second step third one is combination with tyrosine that mult form multiple mit and dit fourth step is known as combination together to form t3 and t4 okay that reaction name is called coupling reaction now uh, t3 and t4 is already formed this now t3 and t4 combined with globulin to form colloidal okay to form colloidal so basically in this lumen have colloidal that lumen part center part having colloidal colloidal containing t3 t4 and globulin t3 is more important for physiological hormone for this one having fast acting few hours only this t4 is having slow acting it have 4, 4 to 14 days it act as a reservoir so salt in our diet we have iodide iodide trapping process will occur now it will enter to inside of that cell after that um, because of oxidation 
a process for oxidase enzyme it will converted into iodine so this iodine will combine with tyrosine it is a amino acid to form two possibilities is there to form mit and dit so uh, this one is formation of tyronine next step is the coupling reaction to form t3 and t4 formation t3 uh, and t4 combined with globulin and it result in that formation of colloidal this colloidal is presented in our neck the thyroid hormone whenever our body required it will do supply to our blood so colloidal get accumulated in lumen regulation there is access in human body hypothalamus pituitary and thyroid so actually from that hypothalamus thyroid releasing hormone is secreted thyroid releasing hormone act on that pituitary in response to thyroid stimulating hormone pituitary secrete thyroid stimulating hormones so thyroid regulatory hormone act on pituitary in response this pituitary will secrete thyrosine stimulating hormone so when this thyroid stimulating hormone goes to blood it will go to that neck okay after that it will go to our neck in neck it um, it will go to thyroid gland so it will go to thyroid gland in this thyroid gland it will go to that follicle follicular cell this one is the follicular cell on the follicular cell t the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor are presented so here and that follicular cell here receptor are presented this thyroid stimulating hormone bind with this receptor thyroid stimulating hormone receptor to stimulate cell so it will secrete t3 and t4 in blood so t3 and t4 already formed inside them with the help of five step we already known so but it is not secreted in the blood so for that secretion it required already that is t3 t4 presented in blood but okay we knows that five different type of steps but secretion is not happen when it will bind with that thyroid stimulating hormone receptor after that only that secretion process will happen so uh, secretion this is required thyroid stimulating hormone receptor is required then it will be secreted in blood then stimulus will come what is the stimulus the stimulus is thyroid stimulating hormones from that pituitary so when pituitary secrete thyroid stimulating hormone in blood that thyroid stimulating hormone will come to this gland it will combine with the it receptor the receptor are presented on the cell so when t thyroid stimulating hormone combined with it receptor the cells will get stimulated and then only it will secrete t3 and t4 in blood so this is the regulation axis hypothalamus secrete thyroid releasing hormone in blood via blood it will goes to pituitary then it will act on pituitary uh, then pituitary have thyroid uh, that regulatory receptor it will act on pituitary pituitary get stimulate and it will secrete thyroid stimulating hormone in blood it will go into that blood via blood it will go to that thyroid gland 
thyroid gland have thyroid stimulating receptor this thyroid stimulating receptor combined with its receptor it will get activated the follicle cells uh, this here not para follicular cell follicular cell only so this follicular cell will get activate and it will secrete t3 and t4 this t3 and t4 have negative uh, feedback here what is negative feedback negative feedback then t3 and t4 is more in blood okay more in blood they will give negative signal uh, to that hypothalamus also pituitary gland also so thyroid releasing hormone will be less secreted negative signal will come so it will secrete a less amount and thyroid stimulating hormone is less secretion because of t3 and t4 is already more in our blood if there is less in blood they will give positive signal so it will give positive signal so this is known as feedback mechanism whenever huge amount is presented it will give negative signal so it will secrete a less amount whenever we have more okay uh, we have less that time it will give positive signal it will give more secretion so it is known as feedback mechanism so t3 and t4 give feedback at two places one is hypothalamus a second one is pituitary so the level of thyroid releasing hormone and stimulating hormone is always inversely proportional to t3 and t4 so the t3 and t4 concentration inversely proportional to t3 and t4 if t3 and t4 is more it will give negative signal to both of them if thyroid regulatory hormones will be less t thyroid stimulating hormone will be less when t3 and t4 is more thyroid stimulating hormone and regulatory hormone is less so when t3 and t4 are less it will give positive signal to both of them at that time thyroid stimulating hormone and releasing hormone more t3 and t4 concentration is always inversely proportional to thyroid stimulating hormone because of feedback mechanism once synthesized they are stored in lumen they will not come into the blood they will come in blood only when they have receive signal okay the signal in thyroid stimulating hormone so when thyroid stimulating hormone comes from that pituitary in that blood they have thyroid stimulating hormone receptor so here receptor is presented it will bind after that only it will reach to blood this is one follicles these are the follicular follicular cells uh, lining the follicles the lumen containing colloidal this one is the lumen part it containing colloidal this colloid containing t3 t4 and globulin it is the storage form on that surface um, there are some receptor here that receptor known as tsh thyroid stimulating receptor presented and follicular cell and uh, now this is the blood vessels um, thyroid stimulating hormone is coming from pituitary uh, of that brain it is coming in that blood via blood it will act as a receptor it will act on it uh, okay it will act on it receptor when thyroid stimulating hormones bind with this receptor it having that stimulatory effect after that only it have stimulatory effect on the cell so the cell will stimulate they will secrete t3 and t4 which already synthesized in blood so now this this is how t3 and t4 come to that blood so thyroid stimulating hormone important stimulation here process important in stimulation not in synthesis okay stimulation process it is required
then morphology we already discussed next one is uh, that histology this one is the normal thyroid okay uh, look like this normal thyroid look like this if you have take biopsy or cut section of any normal healthy individual thyroid does not have any diseases okay it look like this only what are the things the what are the things presented in these cells this one is the follicular cells okay this one is the colloidal center of our follicles this uh, this one center part uh, this one is colloidal with the condensation from t3 and t4 apart from which between that adjustant follicles is presented okay here follicles is presented that cluster of cells this one is the cluster of cells cluster of cells are named is called as para follicular cell this is the normal follicular cell colloidal separate cell then para follicular cell is presented there are two type of disease graves disease and hashimoto's thyroiditis 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 uh, this Graves disease leads to hyperthyroidism. Hashimoto's leads to hypothyroidism. What is autoimmune disease? Normally, if human have immunity, we have immunity inside our body. Immunities are two types, cellular immunity and humoral immunity. Cellular immunity is by T lymphocytes. Humoral immunity by B lymphocytes which secrete antibody. Normally, the immunity is supposed to kill foreign. Okay, what is the role of immunity? To kill foreign particles. They act against the foreign, not against the cell. If any foreign particles, that body immunity get stimulated, they will try to kill foreign materials. It may be bacteria, fungus, virus, protozoa. It can be anything. So, they are supposed to kill or they act on the foreigns, but sometimes the immunity become uh, some problematic and this immunity will kill the cell. Self-killing the cell is known as autoimmune disorder. Self-immunity, the immunity against the self-cell organ, against the self-antigen. So, in the thyroid, how does this autoimmune disorder hold this is known as autoimmunity. So, first started with the first disease name is called Graves disease. Graves disease is the most common cause of endogenous hyperthyroidism. It will lead to hyper and the second one is Hashimoto. It is an autoimmune disorder which lead to hyperthyroidism. Uh, it um, usually occur in females 20 to 40 years. Female are 10 times more affected than male. Uh, in all the thyroid disorder, females are more affected. What is pathogenesis? It is an autoimmune disorder. So, body form autoantibodies. So, autoantibodies is such antibody which is against the self-antigen. Against the self-antigen. So, what is antigen? The antigen is a thyroid stimulating hormone receptor present under follicular cells of that thyroid. So, in the neck we have thyroid gland. In this thyroid gland, we have follicular cell lining the follicles. On that, we have thyroid stimulating hormone receptor. So, these antibody are formed against that receptor. Okay. So, this antibody formed against that receptor. This receptor is our self, not foreign. But since it is autoimmune disorder that antibody are formed against that receptor. So, two type of antibodies, stimulatory and inhibitory antibodies. 
and acting that receptor actually there is stimulating antibodies they stimulate that receptor they stimulate that receptor so over production they stimulate the receptor in the same way as thyroid stimulating hormones was doing so see this two diagram this one is the pituitary gland from pituitary gland thyroid stimulating hormones is coming this is the neck okay this one is the neck in this follicular cell this one is the uh, follicular cell one of that follicular cell it is a one of that follicular cell when thyroid stimulating hormone is coming from that pituitary and acting on that follicular cell so it started to acting what happened the cells uh, will get stimulated and it will secrete t3 and t4 okay t3 and t4 in blood so this is how t3 and t4 come from blood uh, this is the normal what will uh, what will happening in graves disease so what will happening in graves disease in graves disease this side diagram this this one is the follicular cells it is having two receptor uh, these are the the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor okay this one is the receptor uh, receptor body is forming antibodies so against this receptor forming antibodies it is known as auto antibody against that receptor auto antibody against this receptor so antibodies is coming and binding with the receptor but uh, it will stimulate that receptor so here also stimulation process will occur in the same way as thyroid stimulating hormone was doing <coughs> here also stimulation process here also stimulation process so the receptor will feel like thyroid stimulating hormone is coming receptor will not like anything else is coming these are not blocking antibodies these are stimulating antibodies they are stimulating the receptor in the same way as thyroid stimulating hormone was doing so the cell will feel like thyroid stimulating hormones have arrived okay so so they will get stimulated so they will get stimulated they will secrete too much see here less amount here too much t3 and t4 in blood so diagnosis compare normally how much t3 and t3 and t4 how much here is coming so the person will have hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism in blood you will found more amount of t3 and t4 because of feedback this t3 and t4 will give feedback at that pituitary because there is more t3 and t4 in blood so it will give negative feedback at that pituitary thyroid stimulating hormone will be less if you test that blood of that person there will be more t3 and t4 but less tsh a typical presentation of hyperthyroidism uh, this will be presentation confirm to check antibody in the blood stimulatory auto antibodies also presented so we collected patient sample we can also observed stimulatory auto antibodies the auto antibodies against the tsh receptor stimulatory auto antibodies against the thyroid stimulating hormone pathogenesis there is production of auto antibodies the thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin this antibodies is known as thyroid stimulatory immunoglobulin the uh, antibody against the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor this antibody are known as tsh here 
thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin so here thyroid stimulating receptor here um, thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin there are long acting they are long acting so long acting thyroid stimulatory lats name are given to auto antibodies they will come in blood they are synthesized they will come to the blood they will reacted with the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor so thyroid stimulating hormone receptor will stimulate molecular cells form abundant of thyroid abundant of t3 t4 because of feedback that thyroid stimulating hormone suppressed so less tsh this is the scenario next one is cross you will find the thyroid gland is more moderately enlarged in size so here enlarged in size because we know um why it is bigger in size because all the cells are stimulated so here stimulation process now uh, they are stimulated they are, are synthesized or secreted more and more t3 t4 so little bit enlargement cut uh, and section you can see red color colloidal material like this colloidal material is presented cut it and make a slide of that cross it is a hyperthyroidism okay this one is the hyperthyroidism normal cell we already know this one is the graves disease there is hyperplasia and hypertrophy of hyperplasia and hyper trophy of follicular cell inside that follicle uh, the lining cells are follicular cells but that follicle cell having hypertrophy and hyperplasia increases in size and number because of thyroid stimulating hormone stimulation they increase size and number but they cannot accumulated on that circle okay so they are not accumulated in the circle finger like projection follicles already known round shape but now this size will increases also number also increase number of cells also increased why they are increased because of auto and the receptor presented on them and uh, this receptor auto antibodies are coming and stimulate them because of that stimulus they increases size and number basically what will happen they cannot uh, come in the circle they will form infolding so they will form infolding uh, the thyroid follicular cell like this okay infolding will occur folding will occur not round shape finger like production uh, the projection so it is known as papillary infolding infolding because they cannot accumulate they can Uh, they have to do this uh, this is known as papillary infolding next uh, clinical features nervous irritability hyperactivity heat intolerance sweating weight loss and increased appetite diarrhea palpitation fatigue weakness then uh, center no system signs patient have tremors patient cannot hold that paper then hyper kinetic movement patient will be moist and shake uh, that uh, hand become when we will do shake and that time moist and warm hand then Uh, symptoms related with the central nervous system heart rate is more more than 120 130 maybe 140 pulses rate will be there then palpitation will be there sometimes extra systole will be there then eye symptoms eye symptoms like kosher sign 
staring and frightened appearance staring frightening look then one graphics sign then still walk signs few other symptoms like mobius sign jelly neck sign jeffrey sign enroth and grifor signs these are the other symptoms so in this video discussed the auto immune disorder thyroid first one is graves disease follicular cell para follicular cell iodide is converted into iodine form This one is the normal thyroid. This one is the Graves disease. Cross. clinical features central nervous system sign symptoms of cardiovascular disease eye, eye disease other condition thanks for watching